For this video, we'll be consuming BI in the form of reports and dashboards to demonstrate some of the interactive features of Magellan BI reporting. We'll start with a simple report that we created earlier in the Analytics Designer. Paginated reports can be presented with or without a toolbar, allowing users to view richly formatted reports embedded seamlessly in other web pages or applications. Users can run reports with additional parameters. They can view reports navigated using a table of contents. They can get a link to this page to put in an email or a web page. Uh, they can export report content to different formats such as Word, uh, macro enabled Excel, a PDF, uh, HTML, a PostScript and PowerPoint. Or they can just export the data into say CSV or Tab Delimited. Uh, they can also print these reports. The reports can also include capabilities to drill the detailed data. Like in this chart here, we can drill down to a specific time frame, a one year or six months within this chart. A chart slider here allows me to slide that time frame back and forth. And additionally, I can zoom into the area I'm interested in. Hyperlinks can also be included in these reports and hyperlinks can be to external URLs. Uh, they can be to internal bookmarks uh, within another part of the report, or they can be out to a detailed report. So if I click on this, piece of pie, for instance, it'll go to a detail uh, report. So let's go back to our original report. And this time we're going to talk about the interactive viewer. So the interactive viewer enables business users to address a much broader set of business questions by providing additional interactivity than the standard viewer. So it enables users to think beyond the current structure of report and personalize it to fit their needs. So in here I can do things like um, a regroup. Um, uh, add additional columns, add new computed columns, move columns around, reorder them, you know, sort, align them, uh, filter as well. So if I want to uh, say let's group by um, our uh, date and it understands that it's a date field so we want to group this not by every individual date but let's say let's group it by uh, by week. So we'll group this date by week and let's also group this by spend category. And we'll move this column off to the left and we can do some aggregation here. So let's um, um, create an aggregation on our amount column and for our group, not all our group, but just our date group, let's create a new aggregation in the footer and that gives us a new total uh, for each uh, column. So the most important part of this is not that I can modify these and move things around uh, because that uh, is great that you can uh, be interactive with this, but the best part is that I can save this. I don't have to do this all the time. So I can save this as a new report. So we'll call this my uh, new report. We'll call it my new spend report and save it. So now once a week or whatever frequency I pull this op up, I can get my new data included uh, without having to apply these changes again. And if you're the person creating these reports, you're creating a lot less reports since users can customize them themselves. All right, let's have a look at some dashboards. There are additional interactive capabilities when using Magellan BN reporting dashboards. So we'll start at the very top here. We're in the profit tab where we're looking at profit by product line and we're able to select that by country. Behind that, there's a spend tab and this has an embedded report in the dashboard. And behind that, a details tab showing our product line distribution and our total sales, average profit, and products selected. So we go back to our profit tab. We'll start with selectors. And selectors can come in many forms. In this case, it's a checkbox. It could have been a text box or a combo box. And as I deselect items uh, from the checkbox, other items within the dashboard, uh, like the chart here, the heat map, as well as the table, uh, will change to reflect uh, my selection. So this makes it easier, of course, to discover insights amongst this data. And our table can be formatted. So we'll take, say, something like uh, credit limit and we'll apply a filter of say customers with the top uh, 10 credit limits and then we'll sort that descending. I can also format these uh, charts so I can change the chart type um, or in this case I'll just format the chart and uh, remove the uh, values in front here. Now I said earlier that uh, charts can also be selectors. So in this case, if I take something like motorcycles and drill down into it, <clears throat> I get an automatic drill down based on the hierarchy of the data uh, behind the scenes. So I don't have to do anything to get that to happen. And uh, I can use these as selectors as well. So I can say, let's say something like Harley Davidson, I'll create a selector for Harley Davidson. In this case, I'll say apply. And up top here, we now have a global cross filter. So it says product name 
And if I drop this down, you'll see Harley Davidson is selected. So I can use this to select other items. So let's select more than one Harley. We'll select all three of these. And now I've got all three of my Harley Davidsons again uh, applied. All right, now this is a global cross filter. So if I go to my details tab now, my product line distribution only represents motorcycles uh, with 84 number of sales. My average profit has gone up to 1700 as well though. Now the best part about these filters is I can save these as my favorite. So I can save this, I'll just call this um, Harley sales. And now at a single click, I can bring back uh, my tabbed favorites and uh, everything in my global cross filters uh, with just a single click. All right, so let's switch over to the BI and reporting server. So in the BI reporting server, users can run uh, reports directly from here on demand. They can also schedule them to run uh, or even share them with others. Uh, and I've shown you examples of consuming reports and dashboards directly. But most of the time, insights for reports and dashboards are cleverly concealed within other applications. So join us for the next video on embedding BI to see how those applications are put together.